Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is number of dice rolls with target sum. So in this question, we are given three integer variables. The first variable is a integer variable n representing the number of dice and each dice has k faces. Generally, they have six faces, right? But in this question, every dice has k faces numbered from one through k. And we are also given a variable target and our task is to return the number of possible ways to roll the dice so that the sum of the face ups numbers of all the dices is equal to target. Since the target may be large, the final answer should be returned with 10 power 9 plus 7 modulo. So now let's take a look at these examples and see how we are forming the logic. So let's take the first example. First example n is equal to 1, k is equal to 6 and target is equal to 3. So there is one die and we need to form a target. So the die has 6 faces. The faces are from the range 1 through 6 and we need to form a target 3 and we have only one die. You get target 3 if that face value is 3 so there is only one choice. In the second case you have two dices. Each die has 6 faces and the target is 7. So the first die and this is the second die. If first die has value 1, 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. The range of that each die is 1 through 6. If the first die is 1 and you want target 7, you need the value 6. So this is one pair, 1 comma 6. So this is the first die and this is the second die. And similarly, you can switch the values. If the first die has 6, I need target 7. The second die needs to be 1. So this is another pair. Now if first die has, has value 2, I need target 7. You need value 5 here. 2 comma 5 is 1. So you can switch now. If first die is 5, second die will be 2 to get target 7. So 5 comma 2 is another. And again first die is 3. Second die is 4, you get target 7, 3 comma 4. And if you switch the pairs, first die is 4, second die has to be 3 to get target 7. So total there are 6 possibilities. So 6 is the output. A test case where you have 30 dice, each dice has 30 faces and target is 500. So if you take a look at the approach, you need to store the value of the first die to get the second die. And if you think of all the approaches present to solve the problem, probably might be thinking about recursion or dynamic programming to store the value of the previous choice. So that's right, you are going to use dynamic programming to solve this question. So you can form a 2D DP table to store the answers and you fill the table from top left to bottom right and your answer will be present in the bottom right. So let's draw the table. So the DP array is going to be of the size n plus 1 and target plus 1. So this represents the number of dices. That is why n plus 1 to represent 0 and 1 and this represents the target. Target plus 1 because we need to store 0 value too. So dp of 0, 0 is going to be 1 because if you have 0 dices and you want target to be 0, there is one way of doing so. And now if you have 0 dice and you need target 1, it is not possible. If you have 0 dice, you need target 2, it's not possible. If you have 0 dice and target 3, it's not possible. You have 1 die and you need target 0, so it's not possible. You have 1 die and you need target 1, so that dice value is 1. So there is one way of getting that. You have one dice and you need target 2. So if you throw the die and if the face is facing at 2, there is one way. So this is also 1. You have one die and you need target 3. So there is one way of doing so. You have your answer in the bottom right that you have one die and you need target 3. So there is one way. So that is the output here. So here you can observe that. So by default you fill this value. So this is sorted. And all these values are going to be 0 for so any number of target, those that row will be 0 except the first element that is one way to get target 0 with 0 dices. And this value is also going to be 0 always because you have one die and you need target 0. And from here you need to start filling the DP array. So this you're going to get the sum of that value from beginning to that. And since it has only one value from beginning, that is sum. So this value you're getting from the sum of these two elements 1 plus 0 and this value you are getting from the sum of these three elements 0 plus 0 plus 1. Now let's try with the second example and fill the DP array and now you will clearly understand how the DP array is being formed. So we start off with DP of 0 0 which is always going to be 1 because there is one way of getting target 0 with 0 dice and rest of the first row is going to be zeros because there is no way to get those targets with 0 dice. And here you have one die and you need to get target 0 but faces start from 1 through k so this will be 0 it's not possible to get target 0 and here you will get target 1 because here you will add this here you will get target 1 because you will add the sum of these two elements here you will get 1 because you add the sum of these three elements here you will get 1 because you add the sum of these four elements 
here you'll get one because you add the sum of these five elements here you'll get one because you add the sum of six elements and here you won't get one you'll get zero because space value is one through k k is six in this case but you need to aggregate seven it's not possible with one die so value is zero and this value is going to be zero too because you need target zero with two dice which is not possible here also it's not possible to get target one with two dice because each dice will have at least one and one as the minimum value and if you add both you get target sum as two but you need target is one sum is greater than target it's not possible so this is zero here you will get one because by adding the sum of these two here you will get two because you add the sum of these three elements you will get two here you will get three because you add the sum of these four elements here you will get four because you add the sum of these five elements here you will get five because you add the sum of these six elements and here you will get six because you add the sum of these seven elements so here it is possible for one way like one comma one here you, there is two ways to get target as three because first die is one and second die is two and if you switch two comma one so both values sum is three so there are two ways here you need to get target as four so you get one comma three and three comma one and also two comma two here you will get one comma four four comma one 2 comma 3, 3 comma 2. Here there are 5 values to get target 6 with 2 dice. So you get 1 comma 5, 5 comma 1, 2 comma 3, 3 comma 2 and 3 comma 3. Here there are 6 values possible. So 1 comma 6, 6 comma 1, 2 comma 5, 5 comma 2, 3 comma 4, 4 comma 3. So these are the 6 values possible. So this will be returned as the output which is matching here. So to form the DP array, we are going to use 3 for loops. The first for loop, the first for loop is i for loop which will start from 1 through n this will represent the number of ro uh, dices we have the second for loop which is inner which will have j which will start from 0 to target which will represent the columns and we need another for loop called face i can't name it k because k variable is already taken which will represent k so it will start from 1 because face value start from 1 through k so each entry inside the dpr is represented by dp of ij because i represents the row and j represents the column and using this face variable we are going to fill the values so like i said for example if you want to get this you get the sum of the, all these three elements from the upper row so you don't consider this so i minus one will give you the previous row and all the elements without that current column and the previous row you will sum them and get that value and here you can see you actually have to get one here if you follow that logic because you get the sum of all these uh, elements so you place a check where j should be less than face so to implement this logic you get dp of ij current value of ij plus dp of i minus one will give you the previous row and j minus face that is second for loop minus third for loop value but here as you can see j is zero and face is 1 in the first row. We will get minus 1 here. So to skip this, you are checking this condition. J is less than face. If this is the case, then we just continue the process. So continue will skip the current iteration. So keep this formula in mind. We will implement in code. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name. These are the three integer variables and we have to return an integer as the output. Let's start off by declaring the modulus 10 power 9 plus 7. So this is 10 part 9 and when you add 7 it will become this. Now let's declare the 2D DP array and the size of the array is going to be n plus 1 and target plus 1 and we assign DP of 0 0 to 1. Now we start a for loop i starting from 1 through n. So these will represent the number of rows and now we start another for loop starting from 0 to target because the target can be anywhere from 0 to target. So this will represent the columns. Now we need another for loop to iterate through the faces because generally there will be six faces but here there are k faces and each face starts from 1 through k. So we need a for loop starting from 1 through k. By nomenclature i, j, k should be the loop but here k is already being used so I use a variable face which starts from 1 through k. Now we fill the dp of ij because row and column intersection is ij. We add the current dp value from dp of i minus 1 to dp of 
j minus phase and now before inserting into the dp array let's mod it because we'll get a final answer from the dp array itself we need to mod it because answer may be large so before inserting into the dp array only we'll mod it instead of retrieving the answer and then modding it and now before inserting into the dp array here you can see d uh, j starts from 0 and phase starts from 1 so if j is less than phase we just skip the current iteration so we just continue which will skip the current loop and now we simply have to return the answer which is present at the end of the dp array that is the bottom right so bottom right is nth row and target column now let's run the code the test cases are running successfully let's submit the code and the solution has been accepted that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video